Hey guys, Pat here. Uh, just need to talk to you for a second. So what you're about to listen to is a new episode of the BO Boys with special guest Kirk Minahan. And this was recorded before the news broke. It, it broke as soon as we got off the air. Before the news broke that Will Smith will be eating the wings. Will Smith is the guest on the new episode of Hot Ones coming out on Thursday, June 6th. And in our episode of the B.O. Boys that you're about to listen to, we discuss quite a bit the possibilities of Will Smith or Martin Lawrence eating the wings, whether he is never going to eat the wings, whether he'll be forced to eat the wings someday. We, we really delve into this, but we recorded before that news broke. So we were not aware of what was happening in the world uh, when when we recorded. So please keep that in mind. It's a fantastic episode. Must listen. Kirk, as usual, a, a all-time guest. And uh, of course, tickets for the LA show of the B.O. Boys on October 8th are now on sale. So pick those up and enjoy this episode of the B.O. Boys with Kirk Minahan. And uh, stay safe out there, everyone. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Yo Boys for Thursday, June 6th. Fuck it, it's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. Clayton, uh, this summer this summer needs saving, that's for sure. So we had to call in the heavy reinforcements to help save this so far dismal summer box office. So here he is to help the box office rise from the dead. Podcast Jesus himself from the Kirk Minahan show. Kirk Minahan is here. Welcome back to the BO Boys, Kirk. Uh hello, Clayton. Are we we're talking to this guy, Clayton? We can we can, you know, my yeah. issue is not with not with yeah, Christopher, yeah. No, not with that worm. Yeah. But I mean, uh, this guy played, you know, I hate to say it, but it's kind of been like you're like a little puppet for him. You know how much I admire you, Clayton. You I mean, there's no part of you. You're able to to put the sunglasses on and go to work with this guy every day still. I admire I do admire that. Oh, you're talking about Pat, of course. Yes, of course. Of yes. Course. Um, yeah. yeah. So Pat is, I mean, uh, here's the thing. Okay. I know what I signed on for uh, with Pat. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's it's a deal with the devil. And when you mm. make a deal with the devil, you have to deal with the consequences. Sure. It's like what I was saying. Like when, if I were to die, if I would have died today. Mm -hmm. an hour yeah. before this show mm -hmm. this show would, would be i wouldn't have done it clayton uh, uh, but you know what pat would have been like it's what oh. clayton would have wanted oh, oh. come on really? the show must really? go on i would have really put the the full court press on kirk to still do the show yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's like uh, i would have uh, lied for sure i would have said i had a, a will from clayton that says if i die yeah. kirk still does the show day of yeah yeah but and so it, you know, but christopher uh Took a shot at the king and he missed though, Pat. And you can't oh. you, you like he took yeah. a shot at Clayton and he missed. So yeah, yeah. If yeah. I'm him, good luck sleeping. I'd have one eye open every night. That's all I'd say. You know, sleep with yeah. one fucking eye open. Listen, he's a good kid, Penn State kid. You know, no, he's an yeah. alum. But you know, there there is a there is a fracture here. There is a mm -hmm. fracture here that I, I don't know if it could be repaired, honestly. I think it's the most uh, disgusting thing anybody's ever done associated with Penn State. I'll say it. Yeah. Oh, easily. Well, yeah. No, for sure. I'll say yeah. Well, someone no, who was actually uh, enrolled or employed at Penn State, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I want yeah. his statue down. If, he has, if there's a statue of him there, I want that down. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. If you take the one of Christopher down, then I think you got some old ones you got to put back up because you got to have a statue somewhere. That's true. That's no. fair. Yeah, that's yeah. True. I so guess. just put one of the old ones back. Well, right. they'll figure out which one. I um, think it's. I think they put up a Johnny Bananas uh, one because he's the only alum that uh, at this point has not disgraced themselves. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think you're right, Kirk. You actually messaged me while Clayton was out, or I think the episode after he came back that you did assume Clayton was dead during that period. Well, I mean, I trust you, Pat. As you guys know, I'm probably the biggest, you know, B.O. boy there is going in America right now. Mm -hmm. um, so when you tell me that, it's like, you know, my great, my my grandfather, Benoit Doucette, rest in peace, would sit there and have his frozen TV dinner and believe what Walter Cronkite told him. Right. He believed it. So when Pat tells me something, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, 
maybe I'm naive. Maybe I, I have to learn my lesson, but I believed you. And I reached out to you. I was worried. I, I sounds like Clayton had beheaded. So yeah. it was concerning to me. I didn't want, I didn't want, you know, I'm a huge Clayton fan. So I, for him to die that way, I thought was, and your role, Christopher, it's like, it's like it never, it's like, it was like when I was little and I loved the show and those Duke uh, cousins showed up one day. Uh, Coy, and, um, Coy and Vance, was it? Coy, Coy and Vance. And I'm like, well, where the hell? I didn't know who Tom Opal was, but I was saying to my dad, who the hell are these guys? Right. You know, he didn't right. understand. So yeah. It, it hurt. It's a Dick York, I Dick Sargent been, situation. I trust has been betrayed has been ripped and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll we'll work to repair it i think today and going forward yeah today yeah. today's going to be huge for repairing that trust and clayton you know uh getting back onto the show so th- this is this is big for everyone um so let's get into box office we're going to talk about this upcoming weekend but first we got to get your take uh kirk on what has been a rough start to the summer fall guy I mean, let's just quickly touch on, have you seen this? Yep. Do you chalk this up as a uh, setback for Gosling, as a setback for stuntmen? You know, when mm. you saw this, a number, or, or are you saying, one of these people were saying, oh, it's it's holding okay. It's well, holding I, fine. Can, let me just start with this. Just let me mm. briefly say this. I don't mm. like when people on Twitter say to me like, oh, why do you care about the box office results? Just enjoy the movie. Shut the fuck up. Like, I care mm. about like, you know, I don't know. What about Ishtar? What about Waterworld? What about Bonfire mm-hmm. of the Vanities? What about Cleopatra? Like, I I happen to care when the movie does well or doesn't do well. I also happen to like movies. Both can be true. So shut up. That's what I would say to the people out there. Shut yeah. up. I like the box office. Anyway, uh, Fall Guy, I think, I think is correctly what people say. I just think it was put in the wrong slot at the wrong time. Like, if that's a mm-hmm. February, March movie and it does like, nobody's saying anything about it. I think people, I might be guilty of it too, put too much stock into like gossling at the Oscars and this mm. and that. And this is something you guys know I've been saying for a long time. There are no movie stars left. Like if Ryan Gosling plays Lieutenant Daniel Caffey and A Few Good Men, I don't know if anybody goes. Mm-hmm. It's a cocktail. I, I have no idea. Um, so the fall guy itself, I think I was saying, messaging with you, Pat, like I didn't know they didn't market it. Like, was it a comedy? Was it a spoof? It felt like a big spoof to me. Was it a big yep. action movie? Was it a romance? Like what is going on? I, I right. saw it. Um, I found it totally forgettable. I found the comedy to be not, I just, I don't think I laughed one time. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, but it's holding okay. Like it's maybe a single, maybe a, a bloop double. I mean, it's not, I, I heard you guys talking on the episode um, from the beginning of the week. Like it has now just become sort of a forgotten. It's not a disaster. It's just like another movie this summer. Well, well I mean, Furiosa has done yeah. a lot to help fall mm-hmm. guy. Because yes. I mean, in the wake of Furiosa, Fall Guy it seems like a collab right there. It seems like a giant hit. So, yeah. have you seen Furiosa? Is there anyone in your on your team seen it? What is is there any barstool buzz for for this movie? Like, no. does anyone care? No, I saw it. I, I, it's a it's just a, really a franchise. It's not been it's not like a big box office franchise. So, mm-hmm. I think again, everyone overrated. I know the Tribal Chief was saying this for for months, and he was right. Yeah, you know this mm-hmm. idea that you know. It's a knockoff character. It's not even that character of a knockoff of a knockoff. And I think everyone got caught up, as did I, in this idea that Fury Road is this masterpiece that people are now going to flock to go see. And that's just not true. Like, it's not... The only thing I would say is, like, I'm just concerned from a box office perspective that the only thing that matters now are Pixar movies and huge franchise movies. That's what concerns mm-hmm. me. But but those, those are, Inside Out will make a billion dollars and... Wolverine will make 900 million. And then these same people who are writing the box office is dead are going to write that it's back. It's cyclical, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's still Furious is just one of those franchises. And it might be the same thing for the movie coming out this weekend that is just young people don't care about. You know, yeah, did, right. did Harry Minahan, does he care at all about Mad Max? Absolutely zero. The next movie that Harry cares about is Venom 3. Mm. oh wow yeah. so he's he's checked out until october yes right now I mean, there may be something that comes across there'll be some stupid horror movie but like i took harry out like all good dads do i took him out early from school to see venom 2 let there be carnage mm-hmm. yeah uh, we had a great time i argue it's a better uh franchise than john wick that's it gives you exactly what you want every time out yes um i like i absolutely i happen to like the venom movies uh this venom 3 is going to be huge because yeah. harry and his buddies you know my Harry Minahan test. Harry and his buddies 
want to see it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be huge, huge, huge. Yeah. But they, yeah. they didn't care about Furiosa. They didn't care about oh. the prequels of Furiosa, about nope. seeing how Furiosa became Furiosa and was played by a younger, not no. just a younger actress, Anya Taylor Joy, but apparently a child plays a younger version of Anya Taylor Joy for a third of the movie. Right. And the kid who was bullied famously on Twitter was in the movie as well. I don't know if you saw that. A couple of years ago, some kid was he was crying. They put him in the movie. Did you see that? No. no. Is it yeah. the 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 bat kid? Bat kids in the movie? No, I don't think it's bat kid. It's a different kid. Look okay. It. Yeah. So okay. yeah. So but yeah, uh, Harry doesn't care about Wolverine. He doesn't care about. I'm trying to think wow. of other ones. You know, uh, it's just uh, you know, it's a weird. Movies are for older people now. Like they just it's just it's just shifted. You know, did you and your mom see um. Summer camp and talk to people in the theater afterwards, Pat or no? I so I haven't seen summer camp. Obviously, yeah. it, I, I'm sure the the older ladies who we talked to mm -hmm. Oppenheimer about they must have been there opening weekend. Though right. I don't, I well, mean, maybe I, not. It made a million not. dollars. There's no I, way that they were there. I heard yeah. you guys talking about this. I have my cast of older women that would have made summer camp a hit. Okay, let's hear Ready? it. This is great. Yeah, yeah. Dolly Parton, Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin. Wow. Okay. Yep. Done. Yeah. The three are back together. R.I.P. My one of my heroes, Dabney Coleman, not going to be. Well, maybe he would have been able to shoot at the time. Yeah, that he could have shot he, it a, a six months he, ago. Yeah, yeah like, really, Eugene Levy is like a real. Uh, what, what the fuck are we doing? He's no slap Maxwell though. That's for you, sure. No, he's no Buffalo Bill. So you you do yeah. that, and then you you know that that those three work. And Streep hasn't done one yet, but I don't think she's doing that. So Streep would have to man the the script would have to be so good like like the the what they would do would have to be something that she's never been able to do before and she would just do the script for that right like i mean if they did do space camp and meryl streep said you know i well, never space got camp. to go Great. to space camp yes, so right. i'll do this just to enjoy it right you know i good. I think that would work, but you're really going to have to dangle a carrot in front of, of, of her. Cause true. she's just Very true. Very a different true. level. Yeah. That would have been a big sell. If you had said, we're getting all of these elderly actresses into a NASA training program. Yeah, space six months space, ahead of the movie. Space cowgirls, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Clint could be in it. No problem. But you, you know, we love Clint. Put him in it. Yeah. yeah. And we're also, I, I, obviously, obviously, your guy, your girl wasn't in a two pad. No, Ellen Burstyn that killed the box office. Mm -hmm. I, I do think people were so upset that Ellen Burstyn was sidelined for so much of Exorcist Believer that That's if she were right. in summer camp, mm -hmm. people would have said, "Finally, we're getting the full Burstyn in this." Sure. Burstyn's oh, going to be yeah. Burstyn in this in summer camp. Yeah, I think it's you got her. The nine to five actresses. I'd say let Diane Keaton still be in it because she started mm -hmm. the whole thing. So I'd say keep her in there. And yeah, then it's a Clint or the final days of Dad and B. Coleman instead of Eugene mm -hmm. Levy. That that would have been a much bigger movie. Uh did Harry does Harry have any idea about the existence of Diane Keaton's summer camp movie? Do you think <laughs> I'm trying to think of any connection at all in that cast? If I said to Harry. Like you guys know, I've said about Robert De Niro that he's the guy from the War with Grandpa. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a. He's never seen The Godfather, right? He has never. Oh, you know what? You know what we watched and he loved. My hero adapted William Goldman. Uh, Misery. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. He loved Misery, which is a great Rob Reiner. Yeah, he. So there you go. I'd say that's the crazy lady from Misery, and he'd say, "Oh yeah, I can. I guess I can see because she still kind of looks like Kathy Bates." Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, that is a good thing about Kathy Bates is she's always looked like Kathy Bates. Right. Oh, and he, you know what? He's seen Splash. Eugene Levy. Oh, okay. Uh, but he yeah. wouldn't know Jim's dad, right? Like a teenager no. right now does no. not know the American Pie movies. No, oh, that's like a movie from 2000 saying referencing a movie from 75, right? Like, you know, right. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Wow. Would say so if, if uh, us talking about uh, Stifler drinking from a cup of semen would be like Robert talking. Shaw. Yeah, that's in, yeah, that's crazy to think. Yes, it's uh, it's all I do, please. I do like math like that in my head. It's depressing. Yeah. It was like we're X amount of years now from whatever, like Betty Davis eyes when that came out, that would be like a song coming out in like 39 now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. When Keep Stifler it. drank that cup of semen, when we saw that we were as far away, probably to Casablanca as a teenager yes. now is to that movie. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, the elderly ladies of summer camp didn't light up the box office, but will 
the elderly men of the are they in Miami? You're right there in Miami. That Miami PD. So. Yeah. Bad boys ride or die comes out this Friday. It's Bad mm-hmm. Boys Four, even though Bad Boys Three was called Bad Boys Four Life. So no. I, I could feel the confusion. People really they want had, to call this Bad Boys for Life. Right they had now. no foresight. They had no foresight. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, I mean, here we go. This has got a lot of pressure on it. You know, I don't think this movie thought it would have this kind of pressure. You figured, all right, Furiosa is going to do well. Garfield's going to overperform. And this would be just a nice movie the beginning of June. But it does feel like this bad boys movie is coming in feeling like it's got to save the summer right now. Obviously inside out two is going to save the summer, but mm-hmm. this, this is so much pressure. I'll just start. What is the, what is the Kirk Minahan show bar stool buzz for this bad boys movie? Do the bros care? Yeah, I think a little nostalgia. I think the over 35 crowd cares. I would not put myself in that group necessarily. That franchise is not one of my favorites, Mm-hmm. But it sounds like just following these trackers, it's going to maybe overperform. But I've read this before this summer, but it feels like people think this is going to do pretty well this weekend. Yeah. Well, Which Sony's is, trying right. to keep it low. Right. Sony yeah, is like ball. saying this is going to make 30 million. Like they're really mm-hmm. scared of this yeah. thing pulling a Furiosa and just right. totally underperforming. Yes. But otherwise, the over under in the tracking seems to be like like 50. I mean, that would be a slam. That'd be a huge win for them, right? Yeah, I mean the last. So the third one, I'm looking at the franchise numbers. I mean that Bad Boys for Life, Bad Boys Three in January 2020. That to me is one of the all time box office moments, or at least in the careers of the Bo Boys, because I oh, I say, remember that weekend kicking off, right? Yep, a few months we, in, a few months in, yeah, yeah. We we had just started, and that was a weekend where it just kept going up and up. Every time you saw a deadline update. It was like, oh, this is going to open in the high 40s. Then on Saturday, it's it's looking like 50. And then by the end of the weekend, it got to 62. And it was just such a great feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, as BO analysts, all of us, Mm -hmm. we've got to guard ourselves against trying to feel that again because I don't think we're going to feel that again. I I don't think we could just chase that pre-COVID feeling that we're all looking to get. Yeah. I have a feeling we'll know what this is on Saturday morning. Okay. You know, oh. probably even right. Friday. I think we're we'll know where it's going to stand, uh, as opposed to how how that played out. And and Kirk, going back to these uh, Twitter ghouls who mm-hmm. who come at you about box office. Well, that's yeah. why we do it mm-hmm. uh, because of Bad purpose. Boys yeah. Three. The the feeling of riding that wave and seeing the public take their money and put it down for something that they want to see. That's why box office is important, because it's a it's it's a, you know, a, a yardstick. It's a it's a oil. Uh, what is that when you put it in your car? A for your oil? Oh, no. Well, uh, I, no, it's like to test your oil mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. to see what people actually want to see and will pay to see. That's mm-hmm. why it's important. Oh, just and, remember, remember how you felt that second Top Gun Friday. Top yes. Gun Friday. Just Never, seeing yeah. that, that Saturday morning, seeing, oh my, just the, just the chill that went up your spine. You're yeah. alive again. I just got it. I just got it yeah. from you it. invoking yeah. that moment. Yeah. And I think that's why it matters. Uh, Thank you. You know, because there's so few joys in life and that's why so take away a joy from the great Kirk Minahan. Thank you. Podcast, Jesus. I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you. I will yeah. say, uh, I grew up a, a fan of wrestling. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember when I was like early teens, Andre the Giant was getting very old and wasn't able to move around much. And they would tag him up with guys who could really move. I'm getting that feeling with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence in this film. Martin Ooh. Lawrence is giving me Andre yeah. 89 vibes where it's getting, he has to kind of be ca- pushed into the ring sort of. It's, I don't know how it's going to affect the box office. I just, I'm just i just noting it that Martin Lawrence has gotten very old very fast and it looks like Will Smith's going to be shaking his ass to be kind of keeping this thing going. Mm-hmm. Do you think Martin Lawrence spends most of this movie in like a small ring-sized uh, motorized cart to bring yeah. him around the way they had to do it, Andre the Giant? They Andre's still thinking in the matches where he just lock, he'd get caught in the ropes just to kill time. They may do that at some point with Martin Lawrence in this movie and Will Smith's going to run around and save whoever his girlfriend or something i don't know what the hell's going on in this movie well, yeah. 
I don't think it helps. You know, I'm, I'm assuming we've all seen the, the trailer that the first thing we see of Martin Lawrence in this trailer is him being yelled at for eating too much and yes. then yeah. and then begging for a hot dog, being chastised for having Skittles. And then you cut to a whole nother scene. And the next thing he's trying to do is eat more snacks. It's right. I mean, maybe that's what this movie is about. This movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe it has a a you know surprise Richard Simmons cameo when it's actually like about them. yeah yeah I, I almost feel like they've got to make this movie about his weight journey. It could of- even tie into if I might. I'm sorry, Pat. It might even yeah. tie into these older movies I'm talking about where Jane Fonda brings her fitness video back and Martin Lawrence is a client. They fall in love. Like she plays mm. an older woman in this movie. And oh, you kind of went together. I mean, just throwing it out there. That's the sort of joke that bad boys does where they be like, isn't it funny that I am in love and having sex with an old woman? (laughs) Correct. Yes. Like, look how hilarious this is. Yeah. That's just a hilarious as a concept. Now is Susan powder still alive? Good question. Cause that would be, that would be the one that would be like Sully showing up at the end of daddy's home too. Daddy's home too. Great moment. A great moment that Pat missed. Because he left early. I, I did oh, have yeah. to leave early if I had hey. another engagement. And I, I didn't, I could not believe when you told me weeks later that Sully Sullenberger was in, uh, yes. was in that movie. But yes. if they yeah, bring yeah. out Susan Powder at the end of mm-hmm. this, shaved head and everything. Mm-hmm. Still alive? Thumbs up. Still, according to Coleman, still alive, which means she probably died in 2016. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I feel like that that is one that would Ooh, be like that. feet like I would be standing up. I'd be standing up at the mm-hmm. end of this movie if that mm-hmm. happens. I like that. Yeah, I mean the third one did so well. I mean, I'm looking at the uh history of the Bad Boys franchise and it, you know, the first one's 95, second one was 2003, so not a quick follow up there. It's like basically Will Smith went on his run and then finally did a Bad Boys 2. Mm-hmm. And then that third one is 2020, so it's like 15 years after the first one, 17 years after the second one, and now we've got four years later. So it's actually the shortest time in between Bad Boys movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, also, Will Smith has nothing to do. Well, how, what do you? How much is it, does the third one make significantly more if the world is normal, or was it already petering out? Um, with- let me see. Looking at the run, I don't think it actually makes that much more because uh, it's out of the uh, on its on February twenty eighth. That's its uh, seventh weekend. Yeah, yeah. March sixth is its eighth weekend. Right, so so it's, it's, kind of, it's yeah, it's slow. yeah. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. Okay. You know, maybe a couple of million more, but it was already in like low single digits when everything okay, shut yeah, down yeah, in March. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, but it's so much bigger than the other two movies. So, you know, the first movies, it's like a lethal weapon situation where the first movie is a hit and then the second one mm-hmm. really blows up. Mm-hmm. But the third one is the biggest one. So, I mean, I'll throw out there though, is this a situation like the Indiana Jones franchise oh. where you had uh, Crystal Skull was such a long gap between the, the crusade and that one. And Crystal Skull is a bad movie, but it's a hit, a huge yep. hit. Yeah. And then they make the Dial of Destiny. And then at that point, people have said, we already did the last one. We're, we've all agreed we're done with this franchise. Like, I kind of feel like that could be the case with Bad Boys, where everyone was excited when they came back. But this is a little bit of of everyone maybe thinking we already finished that four years ago. We said goodbye. Well, they set up in the third movie, if you remember anything about it. And I remember enjoying it thoroughly. And I think yep. a lot of that probably had to do with the box office performance as well. Mm-hmm. But they were setting this up to be more of a Fast and the Furious type mm-hmm. group situation. Right, right. And I don't feel like they are promoting that aspect of this movie at all. That was the thing that I think we were excited coming out of it, where you had Vanessa Hudgens, you had some younger people on this squad that they'd be part of. So then it could be more of an ensemble and you could have Martin Lawrence being prone on a couch for a few scenes just to really make sure he doesn't fall completely apart uh, to take some of the weight off of him. 
And mm-hmm. I think that is not being promoted here. What's being promoted is the two of them. So it's going to rise or fall off of those two people. You know, is Martin Lawrence still a draw? Is Will Smith still a draw? And I think the the big thing here that's really exciting, and I know we don't like the box office being how it is right now, which is not doing well. But superstars rise to the occasion. Will Smith has a chance to silence the doubters, Mm -hmm. at least for a weekend. And he's a guy who can do it and has done it before. And I'm excited for that prospect. I mean, this is a guy on his last legs as a superstar. He's he's been disgraced. And can he come and bring the heat? Can he come and bring 60 million to the box office? Because if Mm, he does that, he's going to shut me up. Right, because yeah. I, I've been on this show and I've said, you know, as much as tweets aren't ticks, I think there's so much going on with this. This uh, I was going to say young man. He's not a young man. He seems young, but he's not um, this gentleman that would turn off people if they are focused on that. The question is, how focused are people on his personal life? That's the question. There is a lot of people online that are focused on it. But to the movie goers that actually go to the movies that don't tweet about it that go up to the booth and say two for bad boys or five for bad boys. I'm bringing my whole family. Those are the people that are going to make this a hit. And they're the people that don't talk about it before they go and see it. And I think those are the people that are going to make this a a big opening. Yeah. I think the people in South Dakota don't, I I think the slap is like, doesn't matter to like me. Slap doesn't matter. Yeah. Gone over. I think, I think bad boys or franchise means something to them still. I think I, I'm sure we'll do it later, but I think if you said to me closer to 60 than 30, I would say for sure this weekend. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, so you're so. you're pretty bullish on it. So you yeah, think opening that, weekend. I think it's gonna sink, but opening weekend, yeah. Yeah. So so what do you think that is then? Are you basing that on you think people want to see this brand specifically? They still want to see a big Will Smith movie. Oh, just bad um, boys. I think it was a Will Smith movie where he's just running around by himself with no Previous IP, I don't think anybody goes to see it. I don't think it matters mm-hmm. at all. I think this is like I think he knows this is pretty much all he has left. I mean, I guess he could do Men in Black, whatever five. Or, I mean, I guess, but this is kind of it. He knows it, and Glenn's right. If this movie doesn't do well, like just turn up, turn off the lights. Like we're 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 done. I think with Will Smith. I, I mean, if this movie doesn't do well, is he Mel Gibson? Well, that's my that was my thing that I was yeah. bracing Pat to realize mm-hmm. is that you're going to yeah. see a box, which it used to be a DVD box, but now it's going to be um, on, you know, Apple, you know, iTunes or whatever. You're going to um, see Will Smith, Frank Grillo. Oh, no. In an no. action movie together. I mean, this is this is Will Smith and Mark Paul Gosler on the same poster together. That's where Will will be. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Thomas cool. Jane, he will be he'll be he'll be uh, oh, wow. in a two banger next to Thomas Jane. Wow. Uh, wow. That is what can happen if this movie fails. Who is the who is like the female lead in that movie, Clayton? Who we got? I think we get Fomka Jensen. I think we can get yeah. her. Oh, that's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's not, that's I think not we can get cast. Fomka. OK. Will he work with Jason Priestley, a friend of mine, a Kirk Manhattan show contributor? Could he could he move Jason Priestley? Uh, he'd be lucky to. Okay. Oh, I mean, great hosted arguably the greatest SNL episode of all time, Jason. Oh, Priestley, it, so. it is the it is the greatest teenage fan club or the were the uh, musical guest. It is yes. the greatest SNL episode of all time. I'd yeah. say it's up there. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But you're right. I think even worse, like the truckers when they're going across America and they stop at their place in Iowa and get their chocolate milk and their mm-hmm. cut, they're going to see those racks of like the Will Smith DVD collection, like six of them and it's just gonna, mm-hmm. he's gonna be like oh yeah i remember him like oh it's just gonna walk right by it's like yeah. it never happened. the whole run never happened i'm what now you're making me nervous but i'm still i am optimistic about this weekend yeah yeah it's it's it is beyond just saving the summer it's saving one of our heroes because this is saving will smith from it's him as a cop partnered up with charisma carpenter Mm-hmm. In a, in oh, a straight no. to DVD movie that's Ooh. filmed in Croatia. Yeah. yeah. Even back to American Pie. Um, oh my goodness, Shannon Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh wow. You know, one of my favorites. Yeah, it's you know, which is not not great. If do there's we a think movie... Will Smith, do we think Will Smith knows this? Like do he he understands the gravity of this weekend. He knows that if if he if this doesn't open, 
he's being shipped off to Eastern Europe to film movies oh, with right. uh, stars oh, of right, 90s yeah. WB shows. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tara Reid's going to play a hacker in a movie uh, right. that he's in. Wow. Also, I mean, look, I'm critics have said this. I've defended you guys. I mean, you guys have had your ups and downs this summer, too. We know this Snivel mm-hmm. War and uh, the Jamie Foxx movie with Mickey Rourke. I mean, mm-hmm. it's time, you know, it's time for you. Obviously, you know, you guys have, have suffered a little bit this summer and Clayton's gone through his stuff. Pat's buried him. Like, yeah, this is, I think is a bounce back week for you guys, too. Like, I think the summer starts this weekend. Really? Yeah. Everything's in the past. Fuck everything. It, it all happened. Move on. It starts now. Clean slate for Will Smith. And for us, I think. Yes. I think that's Kirk. And you, you, you said something and everything you say is intentional. So I think you intentionally said this, but the big thing about this weekend too, is that it is June now. And June means summer to people. So Mm -hmm. all these other movies that weren't Marvel movies uh, or big fast and furious movies that opened in May, that they don't they're not necessarily summer movies to a lot of people because it's not hot out it's not june july or august and they're not out of school now kids aren't going to be completely out of school for this but this is an oldsters play definitely Mm -hmm. so june you know it feels like summer and if someone's looking for a summer movie what's better than a bad boys movie right Mm -hmm. right absolutely well so we're we're all kind of saying it's an older play but I mean, teenagers, early 20s, those are the ones who take something from, you know, 25 or 30 million to being 50 million, you know, mm-hmm. or to it's not going to be this of so Five Nights at Freddy's. Do teenagers or young people care at all? Is there any do they have maybe nostalgia from seeing the third one four years ago? Is Do you no. think? And so this is just fully on the shoulders of people who are 40 and up. I will say Harry and his do- and my daughter Kate they know Will Smith very well from the slap and it's endless memes and okay they really know so if I said to them hey Will Smith's in it they'll laugh and then they'll do the the joke and then that they don't they they what was the one where Martin Lawrence was a was a knight or whatever the hell it was where he worked at oh, the, uh, the Black Knight uh, yeah I don't think they didn't know that they don't know rebound or he was the basketball coach they don't know Martin Lawrence they don't know about him walking around that highway that time they know nothing about Martin Lawrence. So wow. they have not seen Run Tell That. They have not seen no, 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 no. They know I made Harry watch Eddie and the Cruisers with me, so he knows who Joey Pants is from Eddie and the okay. Cruisers. Yeah, but that's that's the extent of his. Uh... Oh no, that's not true. The Fugitive. He likes the Fugitive. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, so he's uh, he's really catching up on the canon. Like he'll. Yeah, he's a Joey Pants guy. Yeah, he he's knows. A Joey... It's a Joey Pants movie for him. Well, does Joey Pants mean anything? I mean, they they. He mm. died in the, his character died in the third one, and they obviously saw the value in him because Bring him they back. they're bringing him back. He's in videos. I mean, I've seen theories out there. Uh, the tribal chief Scott Mendelson has put out there: Will he possibly become a force ghost in this movie? We did have witchcraft. I don't know if anyone remembers the plot of Bad Boys Three, but there was a, a yeah. supernatural element. There was witchcraft, so there is oh, that's right the yes, possibility. Right. That mm. Joey Pants's character is goes beyond video and does appear as a spirit, you know. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, that'd be good. Sure. Why not? I mean, I love Joey Pants. He, I, I don't think he brings in a lot of dollar value, but like, I'll be excited to see him when he pops on screen. Why not? He, mm-hmm. he doesn't do much anymore. It's good to see him around. I mean, yeah, I, he's cashing some... big checks. It's this and Matrix sequels, so they're right. not getting mm-hmm. right. cheap for those. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a there's a possibility that Martin Lawrence truly is. Uh, undead in real life i mean that there, there is a possibility that that is some sure, sort of possible. facsimile of of martin lawrence that's that's bopping mm-hmm. around on the screen we don't know i mean that's mm-hmm. a reason to maybe see it yeah they haven't pushed that r- really hard and that could be a missed opportunity it's like see martin lawrence for the last time mm-hmm. they they haven't you know I, I think out of respect to his family they haven't pushed that angle i don't yeah, think it yeah. matters much but like i haven't been paying attention is will smith still not doing like he's not going to be on Fallon or Kimmel and same with Martin Lawrence right we're getting none of that from these he's, guys are we not he's only doing uh the sort of Tom Cruise style press where yes. it is no live interviews like one on one with Billy Bush and whatever right right yes. he, yeah, yeah. he he's not which I mean does that matter anymore no, I, don't, does, I don't think so I'm just curious no probably not but I mean 
like you always say, like, you know, he'd be a great hot wings guy in a perfect uh, world. But, I know. was just going to say he should eat the wings. Uh, yeah. uh, he should eat the wings. But the thing is, is that, you know, I was I've been watching. I've been following Michael Richards book tour. Yeah, right? his book tour. Yeah. And uh, this is this is a gentleman who had an incident that happened 17 years ago. Right. 2006. Yes. I'm, I'm maybe not doing that math right, but it's close enough. It's about right. And what is the first thing they asked him about? And of course, I think he's also selling the book on this, too, about mm -hmm. his, you know, racist tirade that he that he did. Mm -hmm. If they are harping on something that happened 17 years ago for Michael Richards, like there's no way they don't mention the slap. They don't mention all the stuff that's been going on with Will Smith, no matter how big of a star. Because these guys are all gotcha guys and, and gals and, and people. People. And so that's why he does not have to at this point, he does not have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. But if this movie bombs, oh. he's going to have to do the Michael Richards thing. He's going to have to sit there and have these reporters that he was bigger than he was a he was so much in the higher stratosphere than some of these interviewers. And he's going to have to sit across from them and take their questions about slapping Chris Rock and his wife's infidelity. I mean. That's something if I'm Will Smith, that's a motivation for this movie to do well, to push and push and push and make this a huge hit. So he doesn't have to sit across from some E.T. Uh, interviewer and do this mea culpa, you know, sure. continuously for every bozo with a microphone. And, right? if the movie, yeah, and the movie bombs, you know, like his other fear is it's 12 degrees and wherever russia and he's shooting an action movie with ian zeering yeah know, in, a, right. in a warehouse yeah he's yeah, in a warehouse these things will keep you up at night with you know whoever is the is the love interest so yeah i i i don't I, yeah that is definitely good but martin lawrence is this movie can make 26 billion dollars and it doesn't change martin lawrence's career i don't think no he only does these and that's it right yeah so um, would you have should they have had martin lawrence eat the hot wings or would that have been a liability for the show? That might have been a, a, an issue health wise. I think I don't know if he, he didn't pass it. the physical, right? Yeah. That you know we never talk about that, but there must be some kind of physical given before they let the celebrities eat the hot wings, because you you don't want someone being killed by the spiciness of one of those Simple allergies too. If you're allergic to them, it's like anything yeah. else. Yeah, I would think there had to be a thorough. There has to be a thorough process, I would imagine. Sure. Right, right. So Martin Lawrence may have intended to eat mm. the wings and just didn't pass the test. I'll say something right now. I don't know if Martin Lawrence is big enough to eat the wings at this point as a star. Oh, wow. Well, they're, I yeah, they're I guess. I, I hate to say it. And to, for, for, for that crowd? I right. mean, they would book Vanessa Hudgens over Martin yes. Lawrence to eat the wings for this movie. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Wow. It's the the wings is such a barometer of of modern star power. It's fascinating because we always uh, talk about people who are too big to eat the wings, but we never talk about people who are not big enough to eat the wings. Yeah, Joey Joey Pants is not eating the wings. Well, I mean, look, yeah. I, hate I love risky business. I'm a Joey Pants guy. Mm -hmm. He's not eating the wings. Early season hot ones. I think Joey Pants would have been an, done an yeah. all time uh, Sopranos, one. But I mean, you still got the buzz from that. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah. yeah. He could talk if, about Midnight Run. I mean, there's so many oh, things yeah, that yeah. he could talk about. Yes, he could. So, guys, I want to throw something else out here. So, Bad Boys, cop franchise from the 90s, coming back with a sequel. We're trying to figure out whether audiences still care. There is a, another cop franchise being revived uh, at the end of June, but it's not going to be theatrical. It is the fourth Beverly Hills Cop movie is going to be a Netflix movie. It's Beverly mm -hmm. Hills Cop, Axel F, trailers out. Mm -hmm. I want to throw out there, what do we think that movie would have done Great compared question. to Bad Boys if that was coming out? Do we think that's a bigger, this summer, this movie, I mean, my my take is that movie is Bad Boys Three, in that that's the one that people big? are nostalgic for. Well, no not way. maybe not that not that big, but no in the way. sense of people are nostalgic for a Beverly Hills Cop movie in a way that I don't think they are for a Bad Boys movie that they just got four years ago. Clayton, don't that's please my... please don't tell me would cry macho. Don't say that, Clayton. Don't do that to me. I, I'm, I, oh, no, I'm no, Clayton. I'm, don't do it. Don't do it. That's Eddie Murphy. It's Kevin Bacon. It's, it's Marvin Dorfler's in this movie again. Judge Reinhold is back. Judge Reinhold. Paul Reiser's in it. 
Uh, guest of the show. Is, 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 I didn't he know it's Bronson Pinchot in the trailer. He's, he's in it. Yeah, he's Bronson he's Pinchot's in, in, in it. Okay, Bronson Clayton, Pinchot's who's in it. Back? They're all who's back. More than me, Clayton. Yeah, but you know what? I just I, I gotta be honest. I, don't say it, Clayton. Don't say it. Don't say it. it would cry macho. It would oh, cry macho. Come on. It would. None of cry those names. Macho. Cry macho. Under four and a half million. And I'm not talking oh, it's no. a Netflix. You know, it is a Paramount Pictures. They're putting this out on, on June, you know, uh 28th. Clayton, that makes that makes that makes 10 million opening weekend, right? Uh, I'll I'll give you Charlie's Angels. What I'll that? give what you Charlie's that? Angels. That meets seven. The Kristen Stewart Charlie's Angels. Oh, the, the yeah. reboot. The... Yeah, the seven? reboot. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I've, oh, I've... No. I'm not even... Wow. The thing is, like, down deep, down deep, I know he's probably not way off. Wow. I'd like, think, I'd like to think Beverly Hills Cop, you've got the music. It's been a while. It's been a it's long been a time. It's been a while. I'd like to think it makes 10 to 12 opening weekend. I'd like to... But that, but that's... But, like, is that super optimistic? Uh, that, that's your best case? I think that the names you're naming are not going to bring the, don't, you know, the, 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 the boys to the yard, as they say, you know, yeah. that's, that's a thin milkshake. I, bacon. I mean, bacon's great. Bacon. I, I would say that bacon, I don't really want to call him a value add because I don't think people rush to the theater to see Kevin Bacon, but it if Kevin nice. Bacon shows up in a movie, people are yeah, pleasantly it's nice surprised. It's like yeah. nice. Right. I got you. Uh, Judge Reinhold means nothing. I mean, I haven't seen this trailer. I mean, Pat, I got, I gotta, you know, I always give uh, Pat shit for not watching trailers. I got to see this trailer because Judge it's Reinhold is, is camera ready. Yep. He's camera ready. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, he's streaming camera ready for sure. Okay. That's okay. the thing. Okay. Is he there, IMAX ready? I don't there's know. John, there's John Ashton who played Marvin Dorfler in the aforementioned Midnight Run is back in this movie as well. Is that, is that the value add? Is he eating the wings? We'd love to see him eat the wings. I'm kind I mean, of wonderful. I, okay, yeah, you, I guess. Not. You know, but here's here's a sneaky first season uh, hot ones guest that would have been spectacular. Bronson Pincho. Oh hell yes! And mm -hmm. I'll tell you why because he did, and this is before the AV Club was like a ghost ship. He killed he, Cruz in that thing. Yes, he yes. did a he did a random rolls. Yes, and and I, I a link in the show notes. I'm going to link this in the show notes. Great random rolls. One five. of the best. Yeah, top five of all time. Because he really does he not Cruz. spare anybody. No. He kills Cruz. He talks about how there is like, well, I don't want to ruin it, but yeah, he's yeah, talking yeah. about Cruz and 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 some stuff that happened on on a set. And man, it's brutal. One of the best. And you can tell this guy does not give two f's. He so link in the show notes for that. So if he would sit down and eat those wings, he would have had some stories. Oh, Eddie Murphy is still big enough to do that. Eddie, Ed, I see. Eddie I could see eat Eddie do eat. Well, Eddie could eat the wings, Eddie but Eddie's not eat. big enough not to eat the wings. Like I think Eddie would have to for I this to fair. do well in theaters. Fair. That's fair. To get to fourteen million, he's eating those wings. So he, he, he wouldn't do that though. He wouldn't do it. He's yeah, very. I mean, it. Too. He's very controlled too. Like you yeah, know, you get to see him. Remember the SNL uh, anniversary? Like, you get to treat Eddie Murphy that. like he's like even when he hosted that time. The Seinfeld thing was like two hours when he was on it. Like Eddie Murphy needs that. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh, yeah. wow. Crime so, that breaks my heart. I, I'm, I'm, wow. I, I am a little surprised that everyone's so low on this. I would have thought. Think, what would you have said? If, if we didn't say anything, what would you have said? It open, opening I mean, week. I, I think it could have opened to 25 or 30 million. Uh, I no, think this could no. have been the nostalgia of this is a huge franchise that you forgot that you love. And it's but, back. But Pat, who loved it? We did. And young people have no interaction with Beverly Hills Cop whatsoever. That is fair. And it's also kind of like the second one is fine, but it is kind of a one movie franchise. It is. Uh -huh. That's the problem. Like, yeah. Beverly it's Hills a Cop Ghostbusters. Movie. Right. And it wouldn't be as, but Ghostbusters also has like sort of special effect. It's got all that crazy stuff that people, yeah. this one does not, does, and I could be wrong unless there's special effects in this film and, I, 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 how about the podcast was in a Clayton? Would that change it? Oh, uh, wow. Podcast. It, it, wow. It, well, then, then Ghostbusters universe is also the Beverly Hills cop universe. So that's interesting. Right. Yeah. Like podcast it. would, I think people would come out for podcasts for sure. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the Beverly Hills cop thing. I think the way to go with it is you reboot it and you reboot it with, and I know, uh, I know who you think I'm going to say, Kirk, and this is not who I'm going to say. It's not him. 
It's not him. It's okay. I think it's you. I think you do Bad Bunny. Oh, if okay. you get Bad Bunny as an Axel Foley type, who mm-hmm. has to come uh, and and be a cop in Detroit or wherever you want to put it, okay. and that's that's a movie people would see. That's a movie that opens Beverly Hills Cop with Bad Bunny. Okay, that's okay. a movie. So he's he it would have to be set in Beverly Hills. I feel like that's a non-starter. The cop could be from somewhere. Oh else, no, I'm sorry. Detroit. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's Detroit. Yeah, no, that's yeah. why I'm sorry. He would, I he'd be Axel coming Foley from was Rico. from Detroit. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He'd yeah. Be coming Detroit. from Puerto Rico. He's a Puerto Rican cop, and he's coming to uh to Beverly Hills to the, work a case. Are the comedy chops? Are we worried about that or? It's it wasn't a great SNL if I remember the Bad Bunny SNL. That's it true. wasn't it That's wasn't true. the Rock's first SNL where you're like, oh, this guy, he's got it. You know, right. right. But um, I think it opens. I think it opens. Yeah. Wow. So that's where we're at. Okay. So the so Hollywood made the right choice, at least in Bad Boys is the theatrical and Beverly Hills Cop is the streamo. Yeah. Oh, I'll go see Beverly Hills Cop opening day just to go see it. Like, you know, when am I, I going to see Eddie Murphy in a movie theater ever again in my life? I feel like that's never going to happen. Yeah. He, he, try the really little bit, is, you know, but like, it just hasn't worked. I yeah, because he, he took the Coming to America movie oh. to streaming, and that was supposed to be theatrical, right? And then it got mm-hmm. sold in COVID, and that that was pretty awful. I mean, that's the thing about this Beverly that's, Hills Cop movie could be that. pretty bad. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. That yeah. was not good. That is, and I'm not a critic, huh? Huh? Personal opinion, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Worse than the Jerry Seinfeld Pop Tart movie? I didn't. I didn't watch it. I couldn't. Okay. I yeah, couldn't. It can't, it can't be worse than that. It can't. Be I worse. couldn't. Yeah. But it's yeah. Uh, if I watch the Pop Tart movie, I'm sure that's going to be a top yeah. top five. But it was bad. You're right. It was really. I, I didn't think. Oof. I didn't think of that. That that hurts Beverly Hills Cop Four too a little bit, or Axel mm-hmm. whatever the hell it's called. That's not good. That's not good. Yeah. Okay. So so Bad Boys is a stronger franchise than Beverly yes. Hills Cop. I'll just throw out one last one, and where we're talking about these '80s '90s cop franchises. Cop and a half? Well, cop and a half. I mean, t- two cops would be incredible. That would be the sequel yes. to cop and a half, as now right. he's a full cop. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I forget his name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, so they, that they, would be huge. Yes. But Lethal Weapon, that's such an interesting franchise. When I, I was looking at it compared to the Bad Boys, Lethal Weapon 1 comes out in 87, Lethal Weapon 4 comes out in 98. They make all four of those movies in 11 years. They banged them mm-hmm. out, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess Mel Gibson's in the situation he's in as a star, but I, I do wonder if that one has any nostalgia value if they were to team them up again and just go for it and Gibson and Glover are back and it's a Lethal Weapon 5. Or Glover, what, what are they doing? Like, they're like, Glover's like 80 years old. Like, what, mm. what, what is he? Is he a cop still? He was too old when he was 40. When he was 40. But that's it's built into the DNA of that character. Yeah, that I mean, from the first movie, he was too old for this shit. You want and you got Pesci, you got Pesci running around. Uh, that and would be the big one if you get Pesci that, back. So. Yeah, I mean, Pesci did Bub Kiss, so he would do Lethal Weapon Five. He did Gone, yeah, he did Gone Fishing too. So yeah, he would, yeah, he'd, he'd be in, he'd be in. Um, that would be that would right. open that would open bigger than Beverly Hills Cop Four. Yes. Y- oh. Yes. The, the, yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's guys want to see Lethal Weapon. There's still a, a group of guys, like I, there's Clayton's right. There's not this huge appetite for, but but Lethal Weapon Five has been teased for so long and so many different. I know Richard Donner's dead, but like you know Gibson's going to direct it. This is going to happen. They're going to have younger guys do. It. I think they had a TV show, right? They did. Yep. Yeah, like they keep bringing it back and some. Yeah, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to happen, but yeah, that would open bigger. Not as not bad boys numbers, I don't think, but somewhere in between. But uh, Pat, I think the, all these IPs that you're mentioning are these sort of IPs that we're seeing failing, uh, you know, uh, along those similar lines are around the same uh, expiration date of, you know, say your Indiana right. Jones is and your Mad Max is. Yeah. So you're pulling out all these 80s, 80s franchises that kind of were able to trickle into the 90s and sometimes the 2000s. But again, we're seeing this sea change. I mean, we're going to see all these IPs falling to the side, right? Yeah. And is Bad Boys one of those? That's the question. Is Bad Boys part of that line of demarcation where the first one was, what, 95, 94, mm-hmm. 95? 
is that too old for anybody to care about? Right. 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 I mean, we're yeah. seeing I, and we're going to see it with Twisters. Twisters is an interesting yeah. one because Twisters that is be 96. Yeah. I think the Glenn Powell effect, who knows? We'll see. That's one that I'm hopeful for. But again, Twisters is 96. Do people care? That's yeah. why I think the, the the great miracle, like quiet reboot or whatever of the last 25 years is the Creed franchise. Yes. You know, yes. Like they took a my favorite movie franchise and my favorite movie. Gene Hack is a favorite act. My favorite movie star, mm -hmm. Stallone, who was great in the first movie, a little less in the second movie, and then off we go. And, and now that's a sustainable franchise on its own. They're going to make two or three more of those. And, you know, and then, then you're done. You have five or six, like, huge movies based off a franchise that was already dying out, but they gave it like a reboot with some fresh legs. And like, I don't know how you do that with bad boys. I like, they're not as interesting characters as Rocky Balboa. Like, they're right. just, like there's, and there's no, you know, Ryan Cougar making these movies and Michael B. Jordan. So like, I just don't think that's going to happen again. That was a miracle that that give a brand new franchise off that. That's what yeah, you I, need. I think the franchise that could have done that and they didn't, was Indiana Jones like that's the movie that seems to me yeah, he's the, the most guy. like Rocky, where yeah. you could have turned him into the coach and you plug a big new star? And yeah, they tried it with Shia LaBeouf in the fourth one, tried it with I mean, it should have worked with my beloved Fleabag, Phoebe Waller Bridge, Baby the Baby the mm -hmm. Week. Yeah. It didn't work there, but they they just didn't find the Michael B. Jordan to pass it along to but that, that that that's the one franchise where i think that really could have worked here's the new indiana jones and that's kind of we thought top gun maverick sort of failed and i know glenn powell's a big star now mm -hmm. but like they could have made those guys bigger characters where they but they just got overwhelmed by crew like the thing about the kree movie was i know he's younger i guess but like rocky was vulnerable he was older he passed the torch yeah. where right i always say like i like top gun maverick whatever but that would be like when he flies that plane, it would be like Rocky saying the, to Creed, I'll handle this last fight. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to let these guys grow. If you want to build this franchise, like, you know, Jeremy Renner, try to mission the Paul. Like it just, sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't yeah. work. Well, that's why Cruz, I think that's why Cruz real. I think that's why Cruz had that power to say like, no, it has to be about me because he saw mission impossible reach new heights after right. he, kind of put Renner to the sideline and yep. saying, no, no, I'm not handing this off. Right. Yeah. Born franchise, same thing. Like it's sort of, you know, you got to get lucky and that hasn't really happened. And so Indiana Jones is a good example. Like with Phoebe, like that's just not, that's not working. Star Wars, they they tried these new people for, I know it made a lot of money the first one, but it did those, nobody gives a shit about those characters. They, nobody wants to see Daisy Ridley in another movie. Like right. they just keep like, uh, sometimes when they try, it just doesn't work. Like I'm sure bad boys love these younger people, but they're not going to have a, no. no, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are going to keep them down. They don't want yeah. that. Shit. They want to make their own movies. They want to be stars still. Yeah, and, I, and I wouldn't be I, surprised if one of the younger characters dies in this movie. I think they have oh, a much sure. higher chance yeah. of getting killed off than Will Smith or Martin Lawrence. Yeah, when that plane crash at Top Gun Maverick, did any human being think that Tom Cruise was going to die in that? No chance. Right. Yeah. None. Zero. Um, the, the other franchise uh, that successfully did this and now is in trouble because of uh, is Scream. Scream also that's pulled true. out a miracle, uh, and now they're in turmoil. But for two two movies, five and six, they really pulled off the impossible. Yeah, mm -hmm. did Dick Van Patten try this in the Dirty Tennis franchise or no? So Dick Van Patten, uh, he he should have been able to make five of those movies. Yes. You know, same. Clayton and I did watch that and uh, yeah. that should have been a franchise. And I yes. think it's just one of those rare cases where the audience was wrong. I watched it as well on YouTube. I felt like they were, yeah, it's one of those movies that's recon that deserves like a, a criteria collection reconsideration, I think. Yes. Just time to look at what Dick Van Patten did in that film. Yeah. yeah. Package it up with the dwarf films. Oh, you know, sure. and, and put and oh put those God. together. Yeah. yeah. And it's endlessly refillable because you could just have a new celebrity come over and play tennis. You sure. know, it is a refillable concept, which is, very, I mean, it seems easy to come up with, but it's very difficult. That's where yeah. the people go who can't make it. Like, that's where the Joey Pants goes. Like he goes and plays tennis to promote. Like this is where those guys they have a home. I think. Yeah. I think that that is the thing that I think is an interesting. Uh, you know, uh, we're always looking for our new hot ones and dirty tennis to do mm -hmm. the dirty tennis interview. Right. Mm -hmm. You're there and you're playing tennis, but 
the interviewer is not playing fair. They're playing dirty tennis. And I yeah. think that adds an extra element where they're asking you questions and they're throwing you these questions while they're lobbing these balls at you. That yes. is that is a format that would work really well on YouTube. I think Dirty Tennis was way ahead of its time. I think Dirty Tennis – I enjoy Dirty Tennis more than Challengers. So that's me. I don't know. That's interesting, yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it definitely had a, a high amount of sex appeal, as did Challengers. Maybe, you know, maybe even yeah. higher. So that's I could true. see that. Yeah. I mean, we're looking for candidates to host Dirty Tennis, and I'm looking right at a man wearing a, a tennis shirt, basically – is Kirk Minahan possibly the oh, guy sure. to bring back the dirty tennis franchise? I mean, you know, to it, inherit that from Dick, I would like somebody in between so I could be the guy that follows the guy. Okay. Got it. Okay. You know, I need like a bad eight month sort of, you know, uh, uh, what was his name? Rolf Bernerski, who took over for Pat Sajak. You know, I need right, okay. the guy after the guy, you know, I think. Right. I think, yeah, uh, sure. I would a love palate that. cleanser. Yeah. Yeah. Then sure. Then we're hitting crazy spin shots. And then all of a sudden there's 26 balls coming at you and yeah, oh, yeah. With lines moving around. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like a umpire with, you know, big breasts is jumping around doing jumpy jacks in front of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. That writes itself. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I probably do that. So yeah. you you need some like uh you know and I say this nicely but like yeah. one of the the lower level cretins from the barstool universe to yes. take a try at doing a dirty fr a dirty tennis franchise they do Absolutely. one or two it's a disaster and then right. reboot to the reboot with Kirk Minahan yeah like it was a good move for Clayton to go away for a couple a couple episodes and now his stock has never been higher like sometimes right. you go away you fake your death you come back and then you're reappreciated right yes. so yeah I think so. I think so. Yeah. And I'd have Caitlyn Jenner as my first guest because oh, Caitlyn Jenner was on, of course, part of Dirty Tennis. That, and, and that would be huge. I mean, what? that kind of, ha I mean, it has to be that. And I'm sure she over, would be so It's excited. like a wacky thing where she hits me, but it's so obviously fake. Like she hit that person. I, I go flying. And then yeah, we start, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, then we're done. Then we're off to yeah. the race. There would yeah. be a lot of usage of crash test dummies in this iteration of Dirty right. Tennis. Tennis. Not struggle with pronouns. It'd be wacky. Like it'd be a very funny first episode. You know, now, we've been we've been looking for a project to work together on. Obviously, yes. the Perk Minahan show and the Bo Boys mm -hmm. and the reboot of Dirty Tennis. This is starting to feel right. This yeah, is starting to feel like this is the project this is the that we find. This is the collab. Yeah, this, this is the collab. Yeah. Oh and yeah, it's time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So before we get into our weekend predictions, just one more movie that, you know, you probably won't be on before this comes out. Mm -hmm. Horizon, an American saga, <laughs> part one, comes out at the end of June. Um, where are you at on this? Because we've gone back and forth. You know, the, the there was the long ovation for the movie at Cannes, yes. though the it, reviews it, post yeah. that have been pretty bad. Look. And... What are yeah. you feeling on this? Kevin Costner. Right. I, I'll tell you a couple of things. Number one, I'm a Bachhead. You guys know that. I'm a Jeff Bachhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, he was very high about this movie. And I think he gets, you know, I've never met, I would love to meet him. He gets very emotional about these, when he goes to these things and yeah. uh, the flash and all, he gets very emotional. Yeah. But I think it's typed up. I think Clayton was saying, who was, was Clayton saying it's going to make a hundred million domestic? I, I didn't say a hundred million domestic, but I am hyped on this. I am very high on this. I it's, do it's think that bomb, 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 bomb. You know what? It's going to cry macho. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, macho. it's like, oh, wow. That was a surprise cry macho. That's, it's that is macho. like, it's going to, am I saying out of macho? nowhere? Well, eight, eight million opening weekend. Which is okay. not quite. What is wow. that? Is, oh, Char it'll be Charlie's Angels. It's a yeah. Charlie's Angels reboot. Yeah. Wow. And I'm probably, I'm probably underestimating Middle America, which I normally don't do. You guys know I'm a common man. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm probably, but I like it. Just it, it's not an appealing. I'm I'm gonna go see the opening day. This yeah, movie yeah. is for me to be very clear. I want to see it. I'm rooting for it. I hope it makes five hundred million. Mm -hmm. I don't see the appeal of this. I don't think it's a great trailer. I don't think cost. I think people can sit at home and watch Costner on TV. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. If it's great, which I don't think it's going to be. If it's great, everything changes. But the, I, I don't think it's going to be great. But I think there's going to be so many people straight out of the fields coming into the movie theater. You're going to see more than any other movie that's been released since probably Maverick. You're going to see cornmeal residue on the seats. You're going to see. Uh, you're gonna see pieces of wheat lying around. You're gonna see uh, hay uh, everywhere. Uh, the Fury. The, 
because uh, which one? Sound of Fury, right? Was that last year? No, am I getting that? that no, sound, it was, uh, sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. Sound summer. of Freedom. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. A, a lot of corn, a right. lot of cornmeal residue on the seats after that. Yeah, I think this is going to be huge. I think the big thing that's working in its favor is that th there is no right now Yellowstone new episodes, so there is a vacuum. There is an opening for something Kevin Costner. They've watched these episodes over and over again. I was on a plane during my hiatus. I was on several planes during my hiatus. Oh, yeah. Sure. And multiple people were watching Yellowstone and they were wanting something. You could sense what if mm. there was something new for me to watch? Mm. And I think that is going to be the key. If Yellowstone had their new season out and it was everything was hunky dory with the Yellowstone universe, yeah, I could just stay home and expect to see Kevin Costner. But you might not see Kevin Costner on your TV screen uh, anytime soon. So you have to go to the theater to see him. I think that is a benefit for this movie. It feels like this trailer is not like they, it's a soap opera, Yellowstone. This doesn't feel like that. I, I, I think Cry Macho. I think it looks just wow. as crappy as all the spinoffs yeah, of Yellowstone. Think. And those were huge. And again, That's yes, fair. putting your money where your mouth is. But this is what I say every time is that these the people in the stacks, the, the earth dogs, the plane sure. billies, they right. buy CDs. They buy cassettes for their cars. They mm -hmm. buy things. That's right. what they're going to do. And they don't tweet. So they're not, we're not going to expect it. There's going to be it. It could be in some areas unsettling to see people in bib jeans walking silently sure. with their heads down to the theater and mumbling one for horizon or two for horizon or whatever. They, they, or the only know what time, they, they only know what time the movie's at. They just show up to the theater. They, they only show up know. The theater and they yeah. sit yeah. quietly in the lobby and wait with their hands folded. I mean, this is going to be an unsettling sight, but Do you think be a lot of people confused that they can, once they're in the theater, once they, they buy the ticket, they can press the thing and pick their own seats. Will that be a new thing for them? It's going to be a, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be, it's, yeah. you're going to sure. see ways, some yeah. major confusion here, right? Sure. So right. yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be really tough. There's going to be a learning curve for some of these yep. people, but yep. I think at the end of the day, they're going to come. Hmm. Wow. All right. I mean, that's going to be a big one to track. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm wrong. I always root for movies to make money. I hope I'm yes. dead. Yes. yes. Especially yes. since there will be a sequel six weeks later. So <laughs> it's, on, it's, a, it's a bold move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it could be the situation where the first one uh, uh, cries Charlie's Angels and then the the second one cries Macho. That, that Should we say flies with the angels? Flies with the angels. Yeah. The, the first it. one could fly with the angels and second one could cry macho. So let's get into our predictions mm -hmm. for this weekend. Um, and we don't have to go into it specifically, but I will say there's one other movie coming out this weekend and wide release that we didn't touch on, which is the watchers, which is uh, uh, written and directed by Ashana night Shyamalan. So M night Shyamalan's daughter has a movie and it stars Dakota Fanning and the, uh, the actress from barbarian. Um, oh. as people who have like people watching them and I've seen movie. this trailer. It's a pretty good trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is coming out. It's Warner brothers. So it seems like this is going to get an actual wide release. It's horror hashtag horror always win. So keep that in mind. So Kirk, as the guest, would you like to go first, second or third in your top five predictions? I'll go second. How's that? Oh, wow. Is that second okay? is surprisingly popular. I, I'm Ooh, always shocked, but guests do pick second. It's it's hmm. it's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. All right, Clayton, since you are alive and were presumed dead, would you like to go first or third? I'll go third. All right, so here we go. Number one, bad boys, ride or die. And I'm going low on this one. I think it opens to 41 million. I, I see that's I'm not low under. though, Pat. So that's not low. Sony's saying 30. Yeah, I the, the Sony, the Sony thing is pretty low. Um, but okay. I mean, from a 62 million on the last one, I think it's going to be a pretty big drop from the last one. So I'm going 41 million. And then I think number two is going to be, I think Garfield movie is number two. It made 14 million last week. I think it makes, uh, 
makes 11, let's say, makes 10 family movie. And then I think number three is going to be The Watcher. Mm-hmm. I think that's three. And then I think If is four and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is five. <laughs> I think Furiosa tall. drops all the way out of the top five. I, I I think it's going to get passed by If and Planet of the Apes. So yeah, I'm going uh, Bad Boys, then Garfield, then Watcher, then so, if and then apes pat it's the watchers not the, the watchers, keanu, yes. keanu uh reeves movie that was one of the lowest number oh. one movie domestic draws ever in i think 2000 right yeah yeah he's a bad guy right yeah he's a bad guy in it yes a rare, right. rare, rare bad guy role for him uh um, oh it's me so yeah that's so kirk here is your top five okay uh bad boys number one i'm gonna say 48 million Mm-hmm. bad boys number two i'm gonna go with the watchers uh i have a 10.2 million dollars mm-hmm. garfield yeah. three 9.8 very close i have if four and i still have furiosa five but i would not be surprised if it got run over by uh by the apes but i i still have furiosa in the five spot boy yeah. that that final domestic total for furiosa is gonna be brutal oh yeah geez. this could be rough I'm not gonna make will it make as much as snivel war no, God, it's at forty nine. I think it it's gonna end up in the low sixties. Sixties, right? Sixty two. Oh or something. my God, that I mean, that is that, a number that's that a disaster. That's a disaster. It's it's a number that people reasonably thought it could have made in its first four days. You know, like there was there was the high end right. where that movie right. opens and does a sixty million dollar four day. Mm-hmm. Oof. Wow, Ooh. wow. All right, Clayton, what is your top five for the weekend? Number one is going to be bad boys. Now this is, this is a tough one. Cause I feel like I was the lowest on this for everybody, mm-hmm. okay. but I'm going to go, I'm going to go 45. Okay, mm-hmm. so I think it could do 45. Mm-hmm. Number two, I'm, I'm going to go with Kirk here. And the reason being is because horror fans are turning out. Yeah. They're turning out for stuff like The Strangers Chapter 1. They're turning out for In a Violent Nature. Yeah. Right? There is, the, I mean, horror always wins, and there is an appetite for this. I think the M. Night situation is very interesting. People are interested to see what this young person can do. Harry, so knows, about also, this, Harry knows about this movie. I'll, I'll tell you that. Harry so, knows about, this is a guy, we went to see Night Swim opening night together. Okay. Harry here, knows about this movie. Yeah. That's the thing. So I think if this this could do those sort of numbers, and that's enough. Mm-hmm. Uh so number two is going to be the watchers. Number three, I do think Garfield. Uh, I think Garfield is going to be number number three. I agree. I think if four, and I, I will go Furiosa five, just because the collab is it, I mean, it's still, I mean, like 8 million last, last weekend, but, um, well, you, I think the collab or, or the planet. Of the oh, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Kingdom. Sorry. Kingdom of the planet. Of the apes. I just, yeah, yeah. Uh, my mind goes to collab. a uh, kingdom. I'm sorry. Kingdom is, is sort of still holding strong, but I do think furious is going to eke in there at five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is going to be fascinating. I think all three of us need to stay in touch throughout this weekend uh, oh, yeah. uh, as the news trickles out on the bad boys, uh, numbers. Mm-hmm. Listen, will it be a repeat of 2020 when we were joyous and numbers kept going up and up? Or are we going to be comforting each other through the weekend when this possibly got, if this opens in the 30s, it's well, Clayton, be tough. Clayton nailed it. We'll know Saturday at 930. Yeah. yeah. Like hit or miss. Like, no, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think anything in between. No. It's either going to be huge, totally wrong, or it open to this number that's a disaster. Yeah everything's so up in the air this summer it's 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 fascinating and terrifying and uh that's part of the being in the box office game is you know for so long we could always just assume oh superhero is gonna make this and this and uh Mm -hmm. you know fast and furious is gonna make this we don't have anything like that right now we don't have any sure bets all summer even even inside out two is not a sure thing no no well no that's a that's a slam doink yeah, it's a, it's it's definitely a slam doink. It's it's the is it a doink to open to a hundred? Probably billion not. Dollar, billion dollar baby. 
Oh, Willie he's calling. I it. love it. Okay, I love it. All and right, you get. I you guys don't have context. I will talk to the Van Patten estate. I'll handle that. I'll let my yes. team handle that. We're good. All right, we'll, we'll take care of that. This okay. is this is the this is the collab. We're yeah. bad boy, uh, uh, the Bo boys, and Kirk Minahan. Yep, we're we're getting the rights to the dirty, dirty tennis, tennis franchise. It's gonna it's be gonna easy. Be we're gonna do it. Yeah. Um, so email us the bo boys podcast at gmail.com if you have suggestions for who are guests that you want to see on the bo boys produce kirk minahan hosted I, I, dirty tennis i also sent you a potential uh, guest for your show at some point we'll see i don't know uh a sign of a, a very famous box office star oh okay uh, uh yes a son of uh, a kennedy family and a box office legend Whoa. Oh, oh, this Remember, is I mentioned this too, a son of Maria Shriver and Arnold. Schwarzenegger. Oh, that's right. Yes, the, yes, of course. Name? Yes, uh, uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger, of course, yes. is it by yeah, Colleen? Did you know this is a box office person? So let's get that out he's there. A, now. He's a, I have been told he's a BO Boys fan. Oh, wow, that I didn't know. I had heard, yeah, Pat, uh, wow, from the loins of a god. Yes, yes. From a, I mean, I mean, come on, that is amazing. Office. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't realize he was a fan of the. I know he was dabbling in box office analysis. Yeah. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. Oh, oh this is huge. I'm working. Oh my God. What? what? I mean, these collabs are going to be out of control this year. Incredible. This, this Incredible. Is huge. Uh, well, I mean, speaking of, we've got the Bo Boys live tour. Mm -hmm. Tickets are on sale for LA. Tickets for New York are going to be on sale soon. And tickets for Boston are going to go oh. on sale probably later this month. And I mean, I don't think we've announced it officially on the show, or at least not with you, Kirk, but BO Boys live in Boston in Cambridge on November 16th. And Kirk Minahan is going to be the guest. Oh, He's yeah. going to be up there for the hour with us. I will and be there. I will be there. That's Gladiator time? No? It is right before Gladiator 2 comes out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Big time. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm excited. I've done live shows in Boston, but never in Cambridge and not with you guys. So I will be, I'll be ready to go. I mean, we're going to have all the Harvard types. They're oh. going to be around. And I think this, this is the show tailored for them. This is for the, if you're a fan of the Harvard lampoon, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the BO boys with Kirk Minahan is right up your alley. Clayton's got, Kirk. Some, Clayton's got some will hunting. He's got a little attitude. Like don't, yeah. don't fuck with them. Like, Oh yeah, this girl. Oh, she comes up to him with the bug, like, that kind of thing. Like that. I could see some of that too. Oh yeah, and will and will Kirk be given the sticky toffee award oh. or whatever that they give uh, the yeah. lampoon? I dress like mm -hmm. a woman. And I'll come in the car and everyone will laugh, and I'll make mm -hmm. like a I'll make like a sophisticated joke. It'll be good. It'll yeah. be like Noel Howard. We'll have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be huge. So tickets on uh, will be on sale probably later this month for that at the good. Comedy Studio in Cambridge. Bo Boys and Kirk Minahan, of course. Uh, watch us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter X, read the Substack. I've picked up the pen again, Kirk. And, and I read I read the whole thing the other day. Yeah. That's very, very exciting. So the oh. Substack, a uh, lot going on. But, you know, uh, the big thing, bad boys this weekend and uh, all of our fates will be determined. I want to come back. I, I'm not calling my shot here, uh, but like, I would like to have a come back at some point for Horizon, even if it's brief afterwards to kind of go over the. Yes. Oh, you're booked. You're booked. Yeah, you're booked. Okay. Recap right. episode for Horizon. Maybe, We're we'll the camera for Maybe, Maybe I'll make my way into the big city. You know, who knows? We must do that. Yes. I'm doing. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, and you know, Clayton and I have been talking. We know we've got a. You know, we've got the show in November, but we have got to get ourselves out to uh, the Massachusetts area this summer. Um, yeah. and I, I think it's time for the Bo Boys to be in the studio oh, any, any time so definitely if you can't make it definitely that that day before the live show for but it, anytime before then anytime yes yeah of course. i i think a massachusetts trip this summer is on the is on the on the schedule yeah good, yeah good um all right clay i think we've i think we've done it my god oh, we said it all That's yeah a, there's nothing left to say maybe there too much um yeah there's nothing uh except for oh. until next time We'll, we'll smell you at the box. box. Oh.